so guys i just showed you how you're going to solve the vancomycin station so this is what the uh, fluid prescription chart is going to look like you can either fill in the information for the vancomycin in the antibiotic section or you can fill it in the fluid prescription chart as well both are fine so how are you going to fill in the vancomycin information um here in the on the top left side you are going to fill in the patient details the patient name the hospital number date of birth allergies everything right and then here you are going to fill in the date on which you are going to um, prescribe the patient that particular fluid next thing is as we calculated that we would be giving 240 ml of fluid so you can write here 240 ml of uh, 0.9 percent uh, so, uh, normal saline NaCl or uh, 240 ml of 5 percent dextrose solution and glucose solution right so the volume uh, or sorry uh, the fluid is going to be just right here 0.9 percent NaCl or 5 percent dextrose right here you're going to the volume we calculated was 240 ml so you are going to write 240 ml over here right so the rate which we calculated was 120 ml per hour so you are going to write 120 ml per hour here additives as i've told you that uh, obviously we'll be adding vancomycin to the solution so you can write here vancomycin um, 1200 mg right uh, 1200 mg or 1500 mg whichever you are going with both are fine right and um, then the prescriber signatures you are going to uh, do your signatures right here so all those three things one thing the dose of vancomycin we are going to write that here how much fluid we'll be using you're going to write that here and over how much time period we're giving which is going to be the rate that is going to be here right so this is how you're going to fill in the uh, vancomycin station uh, and the fluid prescription chart right okay so um, here we have another station um, you are an FY2 in OBG, Miss Daniela Halifax, aged 42, had her fourth delivery yesterday. She has lost 1200 ml of blood. Okay, so the information we have been provided is she is 42 years old. This was her fourth delivery and she has lost 1200 ml of blood. Okay, no known allergy. All right, she has been diagnosed. Uh, she does not have any past medical history. Her weight is 60 kg. Do DVT risk assessment and write down the anticoagulant according to the weight. All right, so let's solve this station as to how you're going to solve this and fill in the details. So this is the chart which you will be provided in the exam. This chart is going to be provided to you in the exam. So on the top left side, we, we can see that obstetric thromboprophylaxis. Uh, we were told that our patient has already delivered. So this is not going to be an obstetric. Uh, we are not going to use this information on the left side, but on the right side, it says postnatal assessment. So our patient has already delivered. They are going to be um, postnatal. So let us look at the postnatal assessment and um, zoom, zoom this thing, right? So let us start from the top. Any previous VT, you know, <coughs> Sorry, we are not provided any such information. Anyone requiring uh, antenatal, no. Uh, high risk thrombophilia, no. Low risk thrombophilia. So our patient is not falling in this category because our patient is not fulfilling any of these criteria, right? So let us move to the next section. Um, cesarean section in labor, right? Yeah. Uh, our patient did have uh, what about BMI? We are not told about BMI. Readmission or prolonged admission? No, we are not told about this. Any surgical procedure? Um, we are not told about this as well. So medical comorbidities, um, we are told that the patient does not have any past medical history. So um, this section is also excluded. Let's move on to the next station. The age was 42. The patient's age is 35. All right, the patient is fulfilling one criteria, right? So the parity is greater than three. This was her fourth delivery. The patient is fulfilling, fulfilling this criteria as well. The next thing was smoker, elective cesarean, family history, low risk. We are, we do not have any information about these things except this one. Down below here it says postpartum hemorrhage greater than one liter. Right, so we are told that our patient has 1200 ml of fluid loss. So our patient is fulfilling three criteria: age 35, parity greater than three, and PPH one liter. Right, so it says fewer than two risk factors, low risk. You just need to mobilize the patient and avoid dehydration. Right, but our patient has more than two risk factor. More than two risk factor, it says you have to go up to 
um, let us look at the previous picture it says two or more risk factor you have to follow the immediate risk assessment right intermediate risk assessment sorry so what does intermediate risk assessment say it says at least 10 days postnatal prophylactic lower molecular weight heparin right so we have to give our patient lower molecular weight hep uh, weight heparin for 10 days so how much heparin are we going to give um, weight is less than 50 kg 20 so our patient's weight was 62 kg right our patient's war weight was 60 kg sorry 60 kg so our patient is falling under this category 50 to 90 kg so this is the amount of anticoagulant we are going to give you can either give 40 mg anoxaparin od for 10 days or 5000 units delta parin od for 10 days or 4500 units tens of parent daily for 10 days i would prefer delta parent because it would save time it is delta parent is already printed in the regular prescription so you don't need to waste your time writing the drugs name just write 5000 units od for 10 days and then do your signature this is a good option so that is how you are going to solve this station pretty simple thing pretty simple task you don't need to um, do anything complicated just you have to uh, keep your eyes and ears open and uh, read this chart carefully right so next station as i mentioned before that what they do is they just change the scenario they just change the infective condition and they change the antibiotics name and the candidates they get confused as to what they have to do but if you have a strong grip over using the bnf this whole thing prescription writing would be a piece of cake for you because you are good you guys will be able to figure out you guys will be able to search for the drugs name right so here we have um miss sally root is 80 years who has been diagnosed with acute pyelonephritis okay the infectious condition is pyelonephritis here she has a history of rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis she has hypertension patient's weight is 65 kg right egfr is given which is 40 we know that whenever we are provided the egfr we have to do renal adjustment we have to do renal adjustment so amlodipine 10 mg od methotrexate 7.5 mg once weekly every tuesday folic acid 5 mg daily except tuesday right so let us jump into patient is allergic to clarithromycin and has itching let us jump into this station and solve this one first of all you are going to fill in all of the information which you have been provided fill in the patient details fill in the patient name age everything then fill in the allergic reaction to allergic to clarithromycin patient has itching then come towards the drugs for which we have been um, told the dose these three drugs these four drugs uh, sorry three drugs amlodipine methotrexate folic acid right so under the regular prescription chart right amlodipine tablet amlodipine po 10 mg od right every day methotrexate 7.5 mg once weekly every tuesday so right once weekly just or what you can do is leave the uh, tuesday day blank and and cross other cross out all of the other days that way the person who is going to administer the drug they would know that the drug has only uh, the drug only needs to be given on tuesday folic acid daily except tuesdays because we are giving methotrexate so uh, for folic acid just cross out the tuesday day tuesday box um, as i showed you guys in my previous video and i'll be showing you guys up ahead as well so just cross out that uh, box and leave other leave other parts blank so after fulfilling after filling in this information let us search for the dose of cephalexin consultant has requested you to start her on cephalexin and we have to look for the dose of cephalexin and adjust her adjust this drug according to her renal impairment so as always you are going to jump into the index this is what the index is going to look like at the end of the book so can you guys search cephalexin for me here pause the video here and search where is cephalexin written on what page number right so yeah it is written here on page number 552 552 so that is the page number we need to open and uh, we'll go to the page of cephalexin so here we are at page number 552 of the pnf and here it is written cephalexin so let us search for the um, condition which our patient is having and adjust the dose accordingly susceptible infection due to sensitive gram positive gram negative okay our patient is not having this 
um, susceptible infection again not this one hospital acquired pneumonia no prophylaxis of recurrent UTI no acute pyelonephritis right so our patient is having pyelonephritis um, we are going to be giving this dose by mouth child 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 our patient is not a child our patient is an adult so it says 500 mg 2 to 3 times a day for 7 to 10 days so the dose is going to be 500 mg PD or TDS for 7 to 10 days right but the story does not end here the story does not end here our patient is having renal impairment the patient's renal impairment was 40 um, EGFR was 40 uh, so let us look for the EGFR yeah the EGFR was 40 so um, here comes the EGFR uh, let us adjust this dose according to the EGFR. It says in adults max 3 grams daily if EGFR is 40 to 50. So we would be giving uh, our patient 500 mg TDS or BD which comes to around 1 to 1.5 grams. So we are below the limit. We are below the 3 gram limit. So um, we, it is safe for us to prescribe our patient 500 mg either BD or TDS, right? So um, we can prescribe this dose, no need to worry, no need to reduce the dose. So we can give 500 mg BD to our patient. Here is the key, it says 500 mg 2 to 3 times a day um, for 7 to 10 days. That is going to be the dose for cephalexin. All right. So here we have the next station. Um, you are an FY, you are an FY2 in medicine, Mrs. Hannah Knowles, age um, 60. So, all right, has been admitted to the hospital because of breathlessness. Okay, she was diagnosed with pulmonary embolism. She was managed in the hospital. She is diagnosed case of hypercholesterolemia. All right, she had a long haul flight for 10 days. She was prescribed the following medication Epixaban for six months, atorvastatin 20 mg OD, aspirin 75 mg OD, EGFR is 87. We have been provided the EGFR. We need to do renal adjustment as well. D dimer increase. What you must do, write down the prescription for the above medication, check dose and write down the dose of Apexaban. Right. Patient is allergic to codeine, she gets aging after taking codeine. All right. So first of all, fill in all of the patient details, fill in what she is allergic to, what type of reaction she has. Then we have been provided dose for two drugs, for two drugs. These two drugs are atorvastatin and aspirin. So write these under the heading of regular medication tablet atorvastatin 20 mg OD and tablet aspirin 75 mg OD PO both are going to be given per oral right so we haven't been told the dose for apexaban let us look for uh, our patient is having pulmonary embolism let us look for the dose of apexaban which we are going to give to our patient so this is the page for apexaban as we saw this station before as well for Apexaban, it says right here the conditions, all of the conditions for which Apexaban needs to be given, and our patient is having um, prophylaxis of recurrent uh, pulmonary embolism or treatment of pulmonary embolism. Our patient is having pulmonary embolism and we are treating it. We are not um, giving it for the uh, prophylaxis of pulmonary embolism rather we are treating pulmonary embolism here because our patient is a diagnosed case of pulmonary embolism so we need to give adult 10 mg twice daily for seven days it says right here by mouth 10 mg twice daily which means bd for seven days right but 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 we were provided about the egfr information and let us look here and Adjust the dose accordingly. Use with caution if creatinine clearance is 15 to 29 ml per minute. Our patient's creatinine clearance was 87 or uh, 89, I think. Um, 87, yeah, it was 87. So we don't need to reduce the dose because our patient is is not fulfilling this criteria, is not falling within this range. So we don't need to reduce the dose um, for any renal impairment. So we can give our patient 10 mg twice daily for first seven days and then maintenance 5 mg twice daily for seven days um, twice daily for the rest of the six months because our patient was prescribed it for six months so i'm going to show you guys how you're going to do this that how you are going to give it 10 mg twice daily for the first seven days and then 5 mg 
twice daily afterwards so this is how you are going to solve it you are going to write apexaban in the drug section the dose is going to be 10 mg root is going to be subcutaneous um, the start it is going to be this um, your your exam date and then put the stop date after seven days seven days from your exam date then write down your name and everything morning and evening you because we will be giving it um, twice daily so circle or tick two um, times in a day right and then leave the uh, boxes for first seven days blank so one two three four five six seven read leave the boxes for first seven days blank that way the, the person who's going to administer they would know that they have to give this medication and then cross out rest of the boxes the person the nurse or the nursing staff would know that they have to stop this medication after seven days and don't have to give it to the patient right that way you would be giving them 10 mg for the first seven days bd next thing you are going to write again apexaban but this time the dose is going to be 5 mg 5 mg subcutaneous the start date you are not going to put the stop date because we will be giving this for seven uh, for six months right so in the morning in the evening uh, we will be giving it bd so similarly just like above you are going to cross out the first seven days because obviously we won't be giving um, this dose as well along with the upper one because the dose is going to double so we'll just cross out the first seven days after the first seven days you are going to leave it blank like this that way the nursing staff would know that they don't have to give it for the first seven days and they have to start um, administering this drug once um, the 10 mg dose is over right so that is how you are going to write apexaban right all right so um, you're in fy2 and hospice care home um, this is victoria yates age 80 is diagnosed with metastatic pancreatic cancer all right so our patient is having pancreatic carcinoma right patient is in term patient is terminally ill um palliative care has been prescribed she has been referred from the hospital to hospice for continuation of her right uh, she cannot eat or drink she is on palliative care her list of medication can be found right write down the prescription for the above medication right so here is the information all of the patient detail patient name date of birth nhs number hospital number allergy breathlessness all of this information right dear doctor Mr. Mr. okay this is the note from the hospice care and um she is prescribed morphine by syringe driver 30 mg per 24 hours okay so uh, morphine for breakthrough pain cyclizine midazolam hyacine paracetamol so we are aware of the dose of these four drugs cyclizine midazolam hyacine paracetamol right for morphine we have been provided the information that he is using 30 mg od in the uh, 30 mg in 24 hours and we have to give her morphine for breakthrough pain as well so first of all you are going to fill in all of the patient details the name age everything the allergic um, what she's allergic to what type of reaction everything after filling in this information fill in the drugs for which you have been provided the information for which the dose is provided you are going to fill in these um, drugs first so cyclizine midazolam hyacinth paracetamol i'm just sure going to show you guys in a minute how you're going to do that then um, once you're done doing that then you are going to look for um, the breakthrough dose of morphine i will show you guys how you are going to do that so this is how you will be filling morphine um, for pain 2.5 mg 4 hourly um, uh, we were told that the total dose was 30 mg so if we give it uh, 2.5 mg six times a day um, the dose is going to be 15 mg yeah 15 mg so what we can do is uh, our patient is having uh, 30 mg so we can increase the dose the dose this dose is going to be this is a mistake here this dose is going to be 5 mg subcutaneous so 4 hourly that way the total dose is going to be 30 mg so you are going to write 30 mg total dose right here instead of writing 2.5 mg you will write 5 mg adjust it according to the total dose this, this is plain simple mathematics you are just going to multiply the 
dose of a single shot by the duration and then you will get the total dose so the total dose was 30 mg you are going to write here 30 mg um, so and the frequency is 4 hourly you are going to write 4 hourly and the single dose of single shot is going to be 5 mg so obviously we will be giving it 6 times a day 5 into 6 would come equal to would become equal to 30 so we will write 5 mg for a single dose this is how the how they trick the candidates that uh, they just change the total dose of um, the drug so that is why i always recommend my students to not uh, do rote learning rather do concept learning and learn how to fill a station right so even if they change the total dose you guys would know how to fill in this information cyclizine we are provided the information 50 mg subcutaneous tds total dose obviously we are giving it three times a day and the total dose would come to 150 so we just we don't just have to write um the drug's name we have to write the indication as well nausea vomiting agitation secretion we have to write the indication as well that as to we are giving it for vomiting for agitation for secretions right so pause the video here and have a look at all of these drugs as to how you are going to fill it so we have prescribed our patient morphine cyclizine midazolam hyacin bromide right so i'm going to show you guys now how you're going to fill in morphine for breakthrough pain breakthrough pain first of all let us um, learn what breakthrough pain is breakthrough pain is that for example if you are giving our patient a total of 30 mg in 24 hours and still our patient is in pain their pain is still not controlled you are giving them 5 mg morphine every four hourly still their pain is not controlled then how much morphine do you need to give to control their pain so this is a table from um, bnf prescribing and palliative care uh, this is a table of conversions from oral morphine to subcutaneous to subcutaneous infusion of morphine um, but it says down below here if breakthrough pain occurs give a subcutaneous or intramuscular injection equivalent to one tenth or one sixth of the total 24 hour subcutaneous infusion dose right so one tenth is easier it is easier to divide uh, it is easier to calculate one tenth the total dose of our patient was 30 mg for 24 hours uh, one tenth is obviously going to be 3 mg 3 mg right so this is how you're going to calculate the breakthrough dose and you can write it in the as required um, station you can write there that um, our patient um, you can write morphine subcutaneous 3 mg prn or as required and then uh, the indication you can write breakthrough pain right so this is how you're going to do this breakthrough pain station okay so um, we have this station here drug interaction lithium um you're an fy2 in psychiatry ward mr robert washington age 50 has hurt his ankle and is in severe pain he was diagnosed with copd regular medication ipratropium bromide to 20 to 40 mg microgram uh, 1 to 2 puffs bd this is an inhaler which we need to give at our west at 20 mg pood then lithium right nurse has asked to you to give ibuprofen for 400 mg bd right patient is allergic to penicillin after taking penicillin to have rest there are some special notes ibuprofen increases concentration of lithium both lithium and tramadol can increase the risk of serotonin syndrome cell butamol and cell metrol is predicted to cause hypokalemia right uh, when given with lithium so we um, uh, we are not giving our patient any tramadol um, but um, let us solve this station let us solve this station so you are going to fill in all of the patient details first then you are going to fill in the details which you have been provided we have been provided that uh, our patient is taking apratropium you are going to fill it in the regular uh, medication chart apratropium bromide um, either 20 mg 20 micrograms or 40 micrograms you can write one to two puffs bd you can just write one puff or you can write two puffs and then write bd Next thing you need to write at orvastatin 20 mg PO OD just like we've been doing before. The lithium dose is not provided here, but uh, most likely I think this station is incomplete and the lithium dose will be provided to you. But if it is not provided, you guys can search it up in the BNS. It is really very easy. Usually it is the starting dose is 1 to 1.5 grams OD per day and then it is adjusted. Uh, after checking the lithium concentration after monitoring the lithium concentration and then it is adjusted accordingly but hopefully you guys won't have to look for 
um, the lithium dose in the exam because it will all uh, it will be provided to you but if it is not provided you guys should be ready um, to fill in the lithium dose as well right so um, next thing is we need to prescribe them a painkiller a painkiller um, if they ask you to prov uh, give the patient cell metrol as well cell metrol inhaler you have to fill in additional information that monitor potassium concentration monitor potassium concept because it causes hypokalemia when given with lithium so in the additional notes write down um, to monitor potassium um, concentration next thing is we know that uh, we can't give NSAIDs along with lithium so the safest drug to give at this point is paracetamol paracetamol the safest drug of all uh, we are not going to give ibuprofen because the um, it causes interaction with the lithium so we'll be giving paracetamol so how much paracetamol are you going to give usual dose of paracetamol is one grams so you can write it under the as required section um, you can write one gram when required or SOS, right? PO or IV, it is up to you, doesn't matter, right? Or you can write it in the regular medication as well. You can write um, paracetamol, um, one gram, TDS, you can write that as well. No, um, both are fine. You can either write it in the um, regular medication chart as well. You can write it in the as required section as well. So it is not a big deal. Right, so that is how you are, you guys will be solving this session too. Uh, you guys are not going to fulfill the ibuprofen section, but uh, you will be fulfilling. Uh, you will be writing um, paracetamol instead of this. Okay, so here are a few examples. I solved all of the stations and I uh, calculated. I uh, looked up in the BNF for the doses of each drug. This um, is what I calculated um, for the doses of drug, their frequency, and everything. You guys can pause the video and look it up but i do not recommend you to wrote learn this right it is better to solve all of the stations by yourself here are a few examples you can pause the video here and look it up look in the chart as to how you are going to fill in the information for every drug mepiracin um, this is how you are going to fill this 2% mepiracin ointment ttt means tds three times a day the route is going to be topical uh, you're going to apply it on the skin the start date the stop date and then your name and gmc number and the indication right so furthermore here are further examples how to write paracetamol and oxaparin and ramipril at or west at and right so this is how you're going to do this right uh, similarly here are further examples um, how to write salbutamol how to write morphine how to write cyclizine how to write midazolam how to write hyacinth bromide how to write morphine paracetamol everything right so i hope um, prescription writing is clear to you guys now um, if you guys have any questions let me know you guys can ask in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer your queries right thank you so much guys have a nice day